article um, was actually um, titled, Some Language Interpreters Are Acts of Omission, A Failure of Duty. Um, so basically, um, there are kind of two different parts of this. There's commission and omission. Um, and an example of commission for interpreting would be like a breach of confidentiality or um, if you accepted assignments that were like um, beyond your capacity. So if you were an interpreter for let's say like a few months and someone asked you to do a um, legal interpreting appointment or something, like you would have to turn that down because you aren't experienced enough in that yet and it would be beyond your capacity to do that. Um, and just demonstrating um, a lack of respect for consumers or colleagues, so basically I guess in a sense not respecting them enough to tell them, hey, I'm not fit for this position or job at the moment. Um, a mission um, are actually instances where um, the practitioner doesn't follow um, what's basically best for performing um, their duty. So that could be, um, for example, failing to let the consumer or client know um, where the barriers are for interpretation or um, not clarifying information um, that you're putting out there um, that you misinterpret and not letting them know. Um, or also just failure to um, maybe do consecutive interpreting um, just in different circumstances. Um, so why, I guess, part of, and then another part of the article is next, why would we not act on this? Why would we, um, if we messed up, why would we not voice that to the client and say, hey, listen, um, I didn't do this right, let's fix it, you know, or just say, oh, that's not what I meant, let's, um, I guess, just make a better bridge of communication and just letting the client know that you did not do something correct um, and messed up the relay of information. Um, so uh, there's uh, this idea of just being interpreters, and um, that's kind of an outdated expression, or just purely facilitating communication, so just being this like robot almost, as if we're invisible. And um, honestly, that's just hiding behind um, that way of thinking about ourselves, and it's an outdated role. Um, so uh, we can't just simply stand by and pretend like we aren't there. Um, just letting words be passed around carelessly, not making sure that the message is truly being conveyed, and if that means we have to intervene for a moment. Um, the article says that studies show, actually, um, this is talking about bystanders and just having like multiple people there, and the differences in what you do um, versus when people are watching you and there are other people around you. Um, so the article says that there are studies that show that the more bystanders there are in a situation, the less compelled people feel to do something. So for example, if there's like an emergency, there's like someone drowning or something, um, and there's a giant crowd of people, um, the statistics show that if nothing happens and no one does anything, it isn't because the people are heartless and they like want that individual to drown or like whatever. Um, it's because there are so many other people in the presence that, that, that are around them, um, it causes them to not know what to do because there's no, um, there's nothing organized, there's no specific person designated to do something, and so they don't do anything, it's almost like a stalemate in a sense, they, they're all looking at each other like, well, I don't know who's supposed to do anything, so then nothing happens. Um, and that's what happens sometimes with interpreters, they don't know when to step in, and so they just don't do anything. Um, so, for us as interpreters, um, whenever we don't understand what we're assigned to do um, and like, we don't let both clients know what's going on with that breakdown of communication, um, that's kind of what happens is they, they, we get in this state of like, oh, I'm not really exactly sure what I should do, so I'm just going to shut down and not do anything because I'm just the interpreter. Um, so there's actually an article, um, Steps for Practicing Due Diligence. Um, and due diligence is actually um, the level of attention and care um, that a competent professional exercises to avoid harm to consumers and their services. Um, so the first step is to recognize that there may need that there may need to be an intervention. So basically, it's just accepting the fact: okay, I did something wrong or something happened, and now I need to step in. So just acknowledging that first step. 
Um, so just to know, to learn to see the signs um, that show that there um, is not a means of effective communication happening. Um, and then the next step, step number two, is to take responsibility. So know who holds the authority in the situation to intervene, and part of this is doing this quickly. So thinking on your feet and knowing, okay, do I need to step in or does someone else need to do this? Is the doctor or the deaf client? You know, things like that. Um, step three is to plan a course of action. Um, so deciding how to act on the incident and be open about your mistakes um, because it creates trust with you and the client so they know you aren't pretending to know that like you're knowing what's going on but really you don't. So if you're open with the clients and say, hey, listen, I messed up, this is what needs to happen, and then being open with them, and that creates a much better um, there's trust barrier between the two of you or the three of you, or however many people are involved. Um, and then the last step is to take action. So um, to not be fearful of stepping out of your uh, professional role, um, because that's not the case, and actually by knowing that we are carrying out our duty as interpreters and professionals whenever we um, do this, whenever we basically better effectively communicate um, or facilitate communication. Um, and if we don't act when we need to, it can result in a loss on the client's side or serious results in the end for them due to our mistake and not correcting it. So by not stepping in and intervening, we actually cause more um, discomfort in the end or uh, it can just kind of result in the breakdown of communication all the way and then both people are just not knowing what's happening and that's just no good. Um, so personally I think as interpreters and professionals um, it's important to weigh these things, the, the consequence of us intervening versus uh, and intervening in the conversation versus the contribution makes in the end. Um, and I think, just like I said in step four, if we don't do anything, then that's going to cause this breakdown in communication that is going to be bad. Like, you're not going to know what to do. You're so far in the hole, in the pit, that you can't really dig yourself back out. And then you lose that um, trust with your client because they are probably sitting in there thinking, well, why didn't she tell me earlier this was happening? And um, that's, yeah. Um, and then... Uh, I just think it's our duty to make sure that both ends know what's going on and that the communication is effective. So taking these steps, um, I think the article hits the nail right on the head um, and that it, it's the hard questions like these that make us who we are as interpreters. Um, we honestly wouldn't be professionals if we didn't have to make these types of decisions and um, know that there really um, isn't much room for um, the author to be biased, honestly, um, because this method of machine or robot-like interpreting is old-fashioned and outdated. Um, we already know that it's better for us to take this um, type of action and be real with both clients um, about what about what and where the communication breakdown is. I think that it's important to know this process of practicing due diligence so that we can be effective in um, <clears throat> What are, so that we can be effective when we do take action um, since it is a fine line um, in deciding when it is and isn't our place to step in but it also comes from experience in the field so um, like I said before like these are just all hard questions but that's all part of interpreting and um, answering these hard questions um, makes you a better interpreter and just professional because we fought so long to have interpreting be a professional profession um, and yeah so and it's just hard because there's all these fine lines like we talk about in class um, of not knowing when to do certain things and like I said it's just going to come from experience in the field and just going over things and talking about them and just trying to become as prepared as we can the time being um, for the future so yeah that was my presentation and I hope you enjoyed it thank you